Now in this video, let us look at the question number 51 to question number 60. So question number 51 says that CMOS stands for. So when I'm saying CMOS, CMOS means it is a comple complementary metal oxide semiconductor. It is not complete metal oxide semiconductor. It is not complex metal oxide semiconductor. It is complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Now question number 52 says the size of cache memory normally is so generally the cache memory size is given in megabytes and register size is given in bytes. So normally the cache memory size is given in megabytes. That is why I can say that maybe maybe the option number B can be a correct answer here, but it should not uh, they should not ask these kind of questions at all because cache memory size is generally 2 MBs. Uh, sometimes it is 3 MB, sometimes it is 6 MB. For high end computers, there are 8 MB of cache memory. This is only for high end computers. And again, the cache memory can be of L1 cache, L2 cache, and L3 cache. So I'll say this is a very, very, uh, this is a kind of questions which should not be asked this way. Okay. So, but generally, the size of cache memory is in megabytes. Now, question number 53 says the digital logic circuit can be. So, this digital so log logic circuit can be combinational circuit, it can also be sequential circuit. circuit. So, I'll say option number C is a correct answer. So, combinational circuits like we have uh, half header, full headers, multiplexers, demultiplexers, these are the combination circuits. And sequential circuits where we need to remember something. Remembering, for example, we have flip flops. So any circuit that you are going to make using flip flops, they are going to be sequential circuits because they need to store some kind of information. So option number C is the correct answer for this given question. Now let us look at the question number 54. It says flip flop is a flip flop is generally used to store one bit of information and it is also called as bistable multi vibrator so the answer to this is a bistable device so it is we cannot we should not give the name as electronics device obviously it is an electronic component but flip flop is a bistable multi vibrator uh, it is used to store one bit of information so we can say it is a bistable device now for question number 55 an integer can be represented as an integer can be presented as 1's complement, 2's complement as well as the sign magnitude representation that depends on what kind of implementation you are doing. Uh, these 1's complement, 2's complement, all these things are used to represent negative numbers. So for example, there is a positive number as I told you. Uh, we have we can have a positive number, we can have a ne negative number. We can use sign magnitude representation or 1's or 2's complement to represent negative numbers. So option number D is the correct answer to this given problem. Now, for Question number 56. See, I'm feeling that I'm going very fast. So I'll try to go slow with you. So uh, uh, my aim is to solve as many problems as possible. So that is why I'm going fast. So it is my general tendency that I tend to go fast when I'm fully working. Okay. So question number 56 says an n bit register means when I'm saying n bit register. Now this n bit register is it generally means that uh, it can have n flip flop and registers has n bits why i'm saying n bit because see registers are made up of flip flops only and it is a combination of some flip flop for example there's some flip flops they are, they are used and these flip flops every flip flop is going to store one bit of information so register when i'm saying n bit register that means it is going to have n flip flop as well as it is also means the register has n bits so option number c is the correct answer to this given problem which is saying both a and b is the correct answer okay now in the next question they are saying how many 128 cross 8 memory chips are needed to provide a memory capacity of 4096 cross 16. Now you need to understand that we are not combining these chips uh, I mean we are not making them as one byte uh, one device you can see you can uh, assume it as a kind of a biscuit so this is a biscuit so you can combine these biscuits to create a huge device for example if this is 128 cross 8 and this way we are going to have some combinations maybe 10 or 15 or 16 combinations are there now accordingly they are going to combine together to create a bigger memory capacity okay now here uh, I'm just assuming that these can be same but I'm just assuming here so because it is 4096 I am just going to divide this 4096 uh, or there's one more way of saying this it is 128 cross 8 that means we are going to have 128 cells in every cell we are going to state store 8 bit of information so you can say it is 128 is 2 raised to the power 7 multiplied by uh, 8 bits 
8 bits or you can say 2 raised to the power 3 that means we are storing 2 raised to the power 10 bit of information in this now when I'm saying 4096 multiplied by 16 this 4096 can be written as 2 raised to the power uh, 12 and this 16 can be written as 2 raised to the power uh, uh, 2 raised to the power 4 so this is 2 raised to the power 16 right so we need to store 2 raised to the power 16 bit of information now for this particular case if you go it like this that uh, for to storing 2 raised to the power 16 bit of information and we need 2 raised to the power and every biscuit here or every cell every memory location is storing 2 raised to the power 10 bit of information then we are going to require 2 raised to the power 6 such memory locations and 2 raised to the power 6 means it is 64 in number so answer to this question is option number C B which is saying 64 as a correct answer because we need to store all uh, we need to make a combination of these uh, biscuits or you can say these memory chips to create a bigger memory chips which stores this much this much of information okay now see for solving this kind of question if you want to solve them fast better is it is the best way if you remember the powers of two that is we already I, I exactly I have done so much power practice that I exactly know what is the powers of two I can write them in reverse order also for example I can say when I'm saying power of 12 that means 2 is power 12 that is, is 4096 2 raised to the power 11 that is 2048 2 raised to the power 10 it is 1024 2 raised to the power 9 it is 512 2 raised to the power 8 it is 256 2 raised to the power 7 it is 128 and 2 raised to the power 6 it is 64 and so on so better ways if you remember these powers then solving these kind of questions become very very fast in the examination hall it will just it will be a matter of seconds for you to solve these kind of problems okay now let us take the question number 58 it says the operation of a digital computer is based on the operation of digital computers now this digital computers actually work on the uh, principle of logics that means uh, you apply logics to uh, perform the operations okay so counting principle is not a correct answer electronic principle again is not a, cor a correct answer why because we have electronic devices but we don't have electronic principles De electronic devices are there electronic principles are not there and missing principle obviously it is not a correct answer there are logic logical principles we apply logics to create programs and to create instructions and how those instructions are followed that to totally depends on logic so you can say that logic principles operations of computers are based on logic principles now question number 59 says the concept of stored program was introduced by von Neumann so that is why we also call it that von Neumann architecture von Neumann architecture that means you store the program and then uh, you run the stored program okay so it is not Charles baggage it is not Howard Akin it is not John Th J Watson Th Thomas J Watson so obviously you only know it cannot be Thomas J Watson but you need to search about these two people also but uh, we clearly know that John knew uh, von Neumann he introduced the concept of stored program architecture so you can read about the stored program architecture here now question number 60 says the parity bit is co in communication is used to find see this parity bit is used to find whether there is some kind of error in the uh, delivered data or not okay so this parity bit is stored something like this for example if let us say uh, we send some bits maybe seven bits are there one zero one one zero one so these are in total seven bits now in this total seven bits how many number of ones are there or how many number of zeros according to that we can set the parity bits let us say we want to set the parity bit according to the number of ones so here there are four ones so because there are even number of ones so i'm going to say i'm going to use zero as the parity bit so this is called as even parity and if the number of bits are like this that means you can see there are odd number of ones so we can set the parity bit as one so parity bit is used to find whether if this combination is received by the receiver for example there's a sender there's a receiver if the receiver is going to receive this combination and if there's some kind of error introduced in this combination maybe one bit is changed from one to zero then by the help of parity bit we'll be able to clearly identify whether there is some kind of error in the program or not so parity bit is used to find error whether error is there or not okay so uh, for the question number 60 you can see uh, this is uh, used to detect the errors but when I'm saying one bit error detection one byte error detection one bit error correction obviously error correction is not a correct answer here error detection is there 
right so we cannot have one byte error detection we have one bit of error detection okay so op option number a is the correct answer for the question number 60 now let us look at the question number 61 and